Hi, welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about the strength of an argument or the amount of certainty that it can handle. So, just as a review, here we have the logic bridge template, and we've got two premises. The president has a valid Hawaiian birth certificate, and number two, anyone who has a valid Hawaiian birth certificate was born in Hawaii. Therefore, our conclusion is that the president was born in Hawaii. Well, here we're going to assume that you subjectively perceive the first premise having the probative load-bearing strength to support a 50% level of certainty of being true. But the second premise is perceived to have the strength to support a 100% level of certainty of being true. So this means that when you look at this argument and you examine the first premises, your, your subjective assessment is that this has a, you know, 50% likelihood of, of being true in, in, in your eyes. But premise two, you believe, you know, 100%, even beyond a reasonable doubt, you believe that uh, premise number two is absolutely a fact, no question whatsoever. So you can see that, you, uh, like in a real bridge, the components of the bridge can have different amounts of strength. And that makes a big difference when the audience is traveling across your logic bridge. How The question becomes, how much certainty can they arrive with at the finish. <clears throat> so, in this example, you can see that the first premise, premise number one, is perceived as having 50% likelihood of being true. And the second premise, 100%. Well, what happens is that every argument starts out with the audience before they begin. Here you've got each box is 10%, so 100% of certainty before they get started. But to travel the first premise, half that certainty has to be dumped because the strength of this first premise is perceived subjectively to only be able to hold 50% certainty. So before you, just before you get to the second premise, the audience's level of certainty is already down to 50%. So that as it travels to the end of your argument, the fact that premise number two is absolutely certain, cannot increase the amount of certainty that's on the truck because it's a, it, in a single line of reasoning, it doesn't get built up again. So you're left with 50% for the, the total. And you can see that here. Here you have the president and we've got 50% uh, strength, 50% degree of certainty or belief. Here we have 100%. But when you get to the conclusion, it's always going to be the lowest number because a, a line of reasoning is only as strong at a, as its weakest length. Another way of saying it is a conclusion reached or justified from one line of reasoning, and this is without objections, possesses only the smallest subjective level of certainty of truth, for example, 50%, that can be supported 
by any one of its premises. So the certainty of a conclusion, such as guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal matter, in this context can never be stronger than the weakest premise in the logical line of reasoning. Now you'll notice that we've talked about just one individual's perception. But it's a, when you have two people, for here we have a teacher's perception and a student's perception, you can have identical, the, they can each be looking at an identical argument and arrive at a different degree of certainty. So the amount of certainty that any one premise can support and the resulting amount of certainty for the conclusion that is reached, justified, is a subjective judgment by each individual traveling the line of reasoning. And that's, as in this case, but both arguments are perfectly logical. So proof in this sense is, is personal. So the teacher's perception here for premise number one is zero, zero amount of certainty for the first premise that the president has a valid, valid Hawaiian birth certificate. Now the teacher does believe 100% it's likely true that one who has a Hawaiian birth certificate was born in Hawaii. But as that truck starts off here full with all 10 boxes of certainty giving you 100%, all those boxes have to be dumped. So by the time it gets to the second premise, there's no certainty left. So the teacher perceives this argument, the conclusion as having zero weight. But another person, here we have the student, and the student believes that the first premise is 100% true, absolutely, it's a fact, no question. And the student believes the same about the second premise. So as the student's truck of certainty travels along the line of reasoning, it never has to dump any of the amounts of certainty because the probative load strength of each of the premises can handle 100% of the weight. So it's important to keep in mind that two rational individuals can be looking at the same logical argument and arrive at totally different conclusions about the how likelihood that the factual conclusion is true. Thank you.